we're going to be talking about our higher resolution cameras, the ones where we can see a great more detail on. So if you're just joining the series, this is being recorded for our YouTube channel. Uh, if you've not seen the previous videos and just now joining us, please go back and watch the previous. We're gonna be moving fairly quick through this and you'll need those other videos in the series as a reference. So moving on, in order to be able to take a closer look at this, we're actually gonna be using our new 12 megapixel camera platform to be able to see the smaller details associated with this. So back into our Insight Easy Builder software, just like with our other examples that you may have seen in our video series, we're going to start off with this exercise going under Get Connected, selecting New Job to clear out the data from the previous work that we were doing. We're then going to go under Setup Image. We need to load in the images that we need to work with for this. We're going to load the images from the PC. Over here on our Navigate button to the right-hand side, we're going to choose our button with the three periods to navigate to the images we want. And the ones we want are the 12 MP, 12 megapixel images. So now you'll notice here, we have actually got an all white screen. And I've selected the first image of the series, but I don't see it in my screen. There's actually a reason it does actually make sense. But one of the other things we need to do from our previous exercises we've done in this video series, we have been using a 640 by 480 resolution camera platform. We're going to need the cam to change the camera platform over to the 12 megapixel. That being said, I'm gonna go back under Get Connected. And just like with the other examples, I'm gonna go under the Emulator tab. And from the Emulator tab, I'm going to pull from the dropdown. The camera we want is a Insight 9912. Please do not choose the color if you're following along, working with the Insight Explorer as you're watching this video. Please choose the Insight 9912, and we're going to say OK. Do I want to save the data? No. Now, it will take about 15 seconds to load the characteristics for this camera into my emulator to allow me to be able to work offline with it. <clears throat> so as it brings those camera characteristics in, it's going to be resetting also the scale. So where we've been working 640 by 480, we're going to be changing over and it's gonna allow us to work with these much larger images. So you may be wondering just how big is the difference? How big is the field of view change? What type of detail can we be able to see with this? So now that we're loaded up, I'm gonna choose the first camera in the series and I'm gonna hit the button up here that says zoom to fit. So now we've got our part in our field of view. But that question may still be out there. What was it we were seeing? When we first pulled this up, we had a 640 by 480 camera and all it was was a field of white when we had all of this other data in the background. So I'm gonna show you something that we can use and we do this for inspection purposes sometimes to be able to help our operator see where to line something up with the camera. Let's go under straight to inspect part. And what I'd like you to do is down here in the tool list, go under the plot tools. And from the plot tools, we're going to plot a region and hit the add button. And what it does is it puts a region on the screen that we can work with. So this region, I wanna go under the height and I'm gonna change this to 640 with a width of 480. This is the region that represents the standard resolution camera, 640 by 480. So I'm actually going to rename this as VGA. Now, the reason I'm calling it VGA is one, it is VGA level resolution. The other thing is that names for tools have to begin with a letter. So I can definitely call this VGA region one and it would fit the naming structure that we've used in our examples in this video series where we had a name and then the type of tool that it is. However, in this example, it might actually make better sense for me to change. Call this region one, so I have the tool type first, and now I can say 640 by 480. 
and it will accept it. So now I've got the size in pixels associated with this. So this is the reason when we first pulled it up, we saw nothing but white pixels because that's all there is where this resolution was looking at in the image. So what if we were to go up a level? What if we go to SVGA, which is a few more pixels? Let's plot another region. So I'm gonna add another region. SVGA, which is available from Cognex and different cameras, is 1280 by 1024. So this gets us to a 1.3 megapixel resolution. In case you were wondering, the VGA level, the 640 by 480, is only a 0.3. So we've now gone from 0.3 to 1.3 megapixel. 1280 by 1024. So now I have renamed the tool. Well, let's go up from there. The next common camera resolution is a 2 megapixel. The 2 megapixel is 1600. by 1200 and you see we pick up a little more detail well that's still not the full region so we go up from there the next common size and the one that has traditionally been the highest res resolution available has been a five megapixel 2448 by 2048 this is the five megapixel. But you notice here, this would be the end of the five. We have all of these other pixels associated with that 12 megapixel camera and all this other detail that we're able to see. So this is really a good sense of the scale difference between standard VGA, 640 by 480, SVGA, 1280 by 1024, 2 megapixel, 1600 by 1200. This is 5 megapixel, 2448 by 2048. Now this gets us all the way out here to 12 megapixel. And if I actually scroll all the way down to this lower right-hand corner, you can actually see that in this window right here that actually shows my pixel number is 4096. There's 4095 by 2999. So there's 4096 pixel columns by 3000 pixel rows associated with this image. A lot more data for us to be able to work with. So as we do a couple quick examples of how we're able to take advantage of these extra pixels, I really want to be able to get these graphics off the screen because I really don't need them for what we're working with. So I want to be able to turn them off. And a easy way to do that is if I collapse my plot tools, I can now go under math and logic. Well, math and logic, how does that help us? Under math and logic, there's a tool called a group tool. So if I highlight group and hit add, I can now group tools together. So in this case, you see that I can take all of the tools associated with plotting those regions and I can put them within a group. And I'm just going to call this group one regions. So now I have a group of tools associated with those regions. So now I can come under the settings for this group tab. And if I say go from tool enabled on, I can now change this to off. And by changing it to off, I get rid of the graphics. They're no longer on the screen to get in my way but at the same time, they're still there. If I wanted to use them for reference again, I can turn them back on as needed, or I can turn it off. You'll also notice I can tie this to an input selection. So I've had customers that ha may have two parts running down a line, part A, part B, different tool sets. I tie that to a photo eye or some other device that identifies this is part A, this is part B. Selector switch from the operator could be a variety of things. Now I can tie the groups to an input to say when I get an input from the selector switch from my operator, I will perform this group of inspections. If my selector switch is different, I'll perform another group of inspections. That way I can have one camera job, 
two different groups of tools and be able to very quickly change from one to the next. For our example though, I'm just going to turn this off. Now, with this 12 megapixel image, there's a variety of things we could do. We could do measurements, we could do calibrations, we could do um, OCR. What I wanted to be able to get across to you is just the real power of what we can deal with with the resolution associated with it. So in a previous example, if you've either been with us or checked out our YouTube channel, we can be able to read different barcodes. And one of the ones that you see that we have here is a QR code. So what I'm just very quickly gonna do is I'm gonna come under my tool set, I'm gonna collapse the math and logic, go under identification, go under read 2D code and hit add. So now you see I have my tool here to be able to read my 2D code. Now you notice this is a QR code. So I'm gonna say, okay. And I'm gonna change my code type under my settings instead of data matrix under my settings tab, I'm gonna choose QR. I know it's a QR code because I have these three squares in these three corners that represent my finder pattern that's distinctive to a QR code. So now I'm going to place my tool over it, and now I'm reading the code. And the result is it's taking me to Cognex.com. So just like any QR code on a piece of retail packaging that you might see in the store, it's directing me to a website. Well, this is a big code. And what I said going into this is we were gonna highlight the power of the resolution associated with this. Well, if I take the same tool and I change it from reading a QR code to a data matrix, take a look what happened here. My code is now, wow, where is it? If you look down here in this lower left-hand corner right here, this is that 2D code. And I bet you didn't even notice that each one of these squares has a 2D code associated with it. If I zoom in on this guy, you can now actually see that 2D code that was actually embedded into that square of the QR code. So pretty detail resolution that we can get down to here. So if I zoom back out, I'm going to resize this just so I get the one square. You notice this one reads wow. This one reads 12 megapixel. IP67 because this camera is indeed an IP67 rated camera. Really, for the way this can deal with that fine resolution, I think the wow is a huge, huge um, point to be able to show how the resolution can let us see some very small areas. All right. Let's talk about another key feature with this 12 megapixel platform is we also are able to use what's known as HDR plus. HDR, High Dynamic Resolution. Let me kind of show you what it does and then explain to you how it does it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come back to the inspect part. I'm gonna come under my counting tools and I'm going to grab my blobs tool. Now this was the same tool that we used in an earlier video. And I'm going to place it over this USB tab that we've got here. And you notice we can just barely make it out that there are four blobs here that make up the electrical connectors of this foldable USB tab. However, if I resize this box and I move it over, you'll also notice there are two blobs over here. And I bet you did not see these before. So I'm going to zoom in on this area and actually show you that there are two blobs here that represent two other electrical contacts within the tool. This is how a normal image would work, but we have the ability to turn on at choice HDR plus, high dynamic resolution plus. What this does for us, Previous generation of imaging chips for the grayscale were 8-bit processors. That meant you had two to the eighth power. 
our grayscale would be associated between 0 and 255, 256 levels of grayscale. What HDR Plus does for us, and I'm going to zoom back out on my image, and I'm going to go to an image recorded with HDR Plus turned on, it changes the scale. So now the scale for this, instead of 0 to 255, our scale is now from 0 to 4095. HDR Plus engages a new generation of imaging chips that is a 12-bit resolution. So we can be able to pick up much more subtle details of color variance from foreground to background, from one part to the next. Now, the way HDR Plus works is it automatically trims off those pixels below what it's in the field of view of the tool, cuts out the high end of what's above it in, that the tool can see, and then rescales everything in the middle to be able to spread it out to allow us to see those details easier and brighter and more subtly. So you notice now in this case, those tabs that were here, we can now see much easier. I'm gonna move my tool off of it. So now you can see the two squares very easily. And now when I move, oops, when I move the tool back on, we're now able to see that we find those blobs without a problem. So this new camera platform that we have, not only do we have the power of the resolution for seeing small details, small features, small defects, small changes from one part to the next, we can also take advantage of the new HDR Plus to be able to see more subtle variations in color from one feature to the next within the same part. So again, just want to remind everybody, any questions that you might have, please post to the chat room. Be happy to uh, answer those for you as we go. And we are now going to be closing this section out and we're going to be moving into the final section of the series. So thank you for watching so far and we're going to now transition over.